Hello everybody, it's Caitlin from Katie's Critters and today I'm going to try out the new Cosclay Translucent. I am super super excited to try this out and I'm going to be using some Picasso alcohol inks with it. So I'm going to open this up. You'll probably want to find a container to keep your clay in because the plastic these are wrapped in is pretty thin and tears like really thin cellophane really. So let's see how squishy this stuff is. Let's see also the instructions. Bake 275 for 30 minutes per quarter inch which I believe is the same as the other clays. So let's try this out. Okay, so really that's awesome. Right out of the package, it's pretty easy to knead. I know a lot of times translucent clays can be kind of crumbly, but this is nice. I probably won't even have to use my food processor to uh, condition it. Very nice. Wonderful consistency. Uh, I was really happy with the pearl clay with its consistency and this is very similar to that. I'm going to be testing out three colors of my alcohol inks. I've got violet, blue green, and manganese blue. I thought those would be a pretty combo. First of all, I'm going to take three little pieces of clay. And I'm going to mix with each one. And those will just fire by themselves, bake by themselves. And with the rest of this clay, I'm going to try and make a pendant with the three colors. And I'm going to put it in this little bezel here. All right. To mix my colors, I have this porcelain plate to try and minimize mess. Alcohol inks can be pretty messy. And I've also got a rubber glove. Unfortunately, I have tiny hands, so rubber gloves are always huge on me but I should be able to do this without getting too messy. So let's do the violet first. I don't want to put too much on there because I'm not really sure what's going to happen. So I just put one little drop. These look like they're pretty dense uh, colors. Oh, yep, and that's why we have a plate. Very messy. <laughs> if I didn't have gloves on, my fingers would just be staining purple so bad. Mix the purple. 
Now I'm going to do the manganese blue. Ooh, it's really hard to get just a teeny bit of ink out of this bottle. I'm not sure if the inks will transfer off of my glove. I guess I'll find out. I'd hate to have to choose a new glove each time. Hmm. Pretty sure I'm getting more ink on my gloves than in the clay. Once the initial bit of ink gets into the clay, it doesn't really come off on your fingers, which is really nice. The translucent cos clay takes the colors really well. And then the last one I'm going to do is the blue-green. So I'm going to put my gloves back on. I'm trying to fold the clay onto itself to try and save as much of the ink as possible. Some of the blue is transferring. Darn it. Alright, I'm just going to be getting this stuff on my fingers now. So you see, if you start mixing with your fingers before the ink has really soaked into the clay, it does transfer. But not too bad. use a little texture stamp to press into these so we can see what the translucence is like at different thicknesses. And I will put those aside to bake. And the next part is going to be really experimental. I'm going to use the translucent and the shimmer pearl clay. And these three colors to come up with a pretty, hopefully, stone-like cabochon for the inside of this bezel here. I realized I also want to do a texture stamp of just the translucent with nothing else on it. Okay, so I've got the Shimmer Pearl and I'm going to save some translucent to the side that I'm not going to color. 
<clears throat> and then I'll color these three pieces with our three different colors here. Violet, blue, green, and manganese blue. I'm just going to use my fingers this time. The gloves are too difficult because they don't fit me right. Oh, yep, there it goes, getting all over me. I'm going to look like a tie-dye project after this. It's such a pretty color. Oh, always make sure to put your lid back on so you do not spill. Okay, I think I'm going to do this small amount with the green. And I'm not too worried about getting purple in this because I'm going to be mixing all of these together independent. The alcohol ink washed off fairly well, except for in my fingernail beds. <laughs> so I look a little funny, but I should be able to make this work pretty well. So I've got my normal translucent. I'm going to take some of this shimmery pearl and roll it out. I'm going to cut that in just little pieces. And these will be mixed in randomly with the, uh, the translucent clays. So I want to break each of these colors into little sections because I want all of the colors to be spread throughout the pendant. So I'm going to kind of create a little mishmash of colors in the beginning and then I'll marble them together. And the pure translucent. Sorry my birds are being so loud. I'm going to save a piece of this aside too. Okay, I'm just going to start smushing things together a little bit. Just kind of haphazardly. I don't have much of a plan here. I want it to be pretty organic.
All right, that's good enough. Now we're just gonna take this and smush it around, roll it around, get all those pieces together really nicely. Spiral that. Oh, move my ink out of the way. That's really pretty so far. Now, this puzzle's kind of small, and I think that's too much clay for it. I think I'm gonna marble this a little bit more. I really like what's going on over here. Hmm, it's gonna be hard to choose what part I want to be the front, but I think it's gonna be this part, because that's just so pretty. So I'm just gonna smush this down into the shape of the bezel a little bit. Let's see, that's pretty thick. I think I'm gonna grab another bezel, because I'm pretty sure I have a larger teardrop size. So let me look really quick. I do not have a larger bezel. So I'm actually going to cut some of this off. Not too much, but I want to cut some of it off. Ooh, look how pretty that is inside. Oh, that's so pretty. <laughs> now I'm not sure which side I want to put up. Ooh. This side, I guess. We'll just continue with what I was doing. I cannot wait to see this baked. Okay, so again, put it down in your bezel. And you just want to smush it a little bit so it squishes into the edges of the bezel. But you don't really want it to go over the edges. If it starts to go over the edges, you can just push it back a little bit. So it looks like the translucent clay does not take fingerprints too badly. It'll smooth out really well. So there's the back of the piece, and this could actually be worn both ways. And what do I do with this pretty stuff? Ooh. All right, I finally decided what I'm gonna do with this pretty leftover piece of clay. I'm gonna make little post earrings out of it. So I'm just gonna roll this a little smaller. But I want it to be either about the same diameter as this post or a little bit bigger. Because 
because I'm going to cut little slices out of it that I can glue on to these when it's done. I'm almost at a good size. Very close. Gosh, that's pretty. I do have smaller posts if this ends up being too small. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut little slices out. I want to try and cut them about the same thickness. I'm just going to look at these and choose the prettiest side and smooth those out a bit. Trying to make them round like little cabochons. You just really want to make sure that those backs are nice and flat. should fit on there really well. I'm just going to save this last piece to use as a little sample for maybe some UV resin to see how that looks over the clay when it's baked. And the last thing, I just want to roll some of this out so it's really thin on one side and thicker on the other so I can see the differences in translucency. And I'm going to go ahead and bake my little test pieces. And I'll be back when those are done baking. All right, we're back. Everything has finished baking. That is a really pretty mix. Glued some earrings together already. Now first off, I'm gonna show you this little piece I rolled out. It doesn't turn too yellow, which is really nice. And of course, it's quite bendy. Now I brought a flashlight to try and shine light through this and I'm hoping it works without blinding everybody. So you can see the translucency. Now 
now it does look like I got a little bit of mooning, but not bad at all. See? On this piece, I got a little bit of weird stuff going on in the back, but that's just because I didn't have the clay smeared in together well back there. My light's dying on me. It's got a really nice translucency. really hard to tell in the video. It shows up so much better in person. Yeah, it's not really showing up. Sorry. So of course since this pendant was thicker, the light doesn't really shine through it much. But that's to be expected with any kind of translucent clay. So I did a little experiment with that small piece I made and I covered it in UV resin. And look how pretty that shines. The resin really brings out the translucency of the clay. You can see compared to just the raw baked clay, it shimmers so nicely. So I'm going to end up putting the UV resin on this pendant too. And I did another little sample of some earrings, and they're still drying, but I put uh, just some varnish on them. And that's really pretty too. So you could do either one. I really like the look of the resin because it gives more depth. And so that's what I'm going to do for this pair of earrings and the pendant. So I will be back when those are done having resin on them. You can see the difference in quality of the resin coated earrings on the right here and the varnish covered ones. You could certainly do more than one layer of varnish which would probably look nicer. But I like the glass like quality of the UV resin and it just looks so nice on that translucent cross clay. And here is the finished pendant. You can see the depth of color in here. It is so nice. I haven't covered the back with resin yet, so you can see the difference. And the shimmer pearl is so gorgeous with the translucent. So I am very happy with the translucent clay. I really look forward to playing around with it more. Um, I want to make some fun creatures with the translucent clay, so I'm super excited. And I'll definitely be posting more about what I do. So there's my little pieces I made.